So, we've got that angle that's marked 124, and then we've got all those other angles. Well, some of those other angles, we already have the knowledge to fill those in. Forget that there's all that stuff on the bottom for just a minute. Let's start off with angle 3 there. Notice that what we have, if I ignore all this other stuff, is that X shape again that we saw the other day. Well, remember, in that X shape, we have what we call vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are across from each other in the X, and what's important about those is that they are congruent. So this one is 124 degrees. This one also is 124 degrees because of vertical angles. Now we also have the knowledge we need to find 1 and 2. Because both 1 and 2, when I compare them with the ones marked 124 there, make supplementary angles. We can be a little crafty and cover some things up there. And as we do that, we see that what we have is just a straight line. Again, I'm ignoring that this bottom part exists entirely for just a moment. If we take and cover up this line here, those angles up top there, the 124 and the 1, are just a straight line. They have to make 180 degrees. Well, if this is 124, then this one is its partner that makes 180. Well, in that case, that's going to be 56 degrees. And we can use the same logic to find number 2 comparing it again with this angle but going that way, or we can pair it with 3 and look at those two going left to right. Realize that 1 and 2 would also have to be the same based on the idea of vertical angles, not just the fact that they're supplementary, or make a straight angle with, this 124 or the one that we identified is also equal to 124 angle 3. So let's go ahead and fill those in with the idea of supplementary angles. But after that, we'd be kind of stuck. 4, 5, 6, and 7, right now as is, we don't really have any knowledge to go ahead and translate the information down other than what we saw in the earlier question. Well, let's pick up on that and talk about what actually happens here. The first question they're asking about first angle they're asking about is angle number 4. There's a couple different ways we can relate to number 4, but probably the easiest to understand is the concept of a corresponding angle. A corresponding angle is an angle that's in the same relative location. What I mean is angle 4 is above a parallel line and to the left of a transversal, or the transversal. There's another angle that has that exact same description. And that's this one that's marked 124. It's also above a parallel line and to the left of the transversal. So because those angles are corresponding, what's important there, what we saw when we measured in example one, is that those angles are congruent, same measure. So if I know that that one at top is 124 degrees, this one also has to be 124 degrees. And why? Because they are corresponding angles. And that's how we answer question A there, where they're asking for angle 4. Those obtuse angles are congruent, as we saw in number 1. So that angle is 124 degrees. Now, that alone would be all I really need to fill in everything in the bottom. Because now we can fill in the bottom the exact same way as we did in the top with the idea of vertical angles and supplementary angles. 4 and 7 are across from each other in this lower x, so this is 124 degrees. Why? Because of vertical angles. 6, we can partner with the 124 from angle 4 or the 124 from angle 7. Either way, those two together make supplementary angles, they form a straight line. So those two together, either way, have to make 180. Doesn't matter which way I do it, it's got to be 56 degrees. Now that should make sense to you on another level now, because we just talked about corresponding angles. Well, look where angle 6 is. 
it's beneath a parallel line and to the left of the transversal. There's another angle that does the same thing. This one up here, too, is beneath a parallel line and to the left of the transversal. So they have to have the exact same measure. Well, notice we had already labeled that one 56 degrees. So since these are both 56 degrees in a lot of, diff lot of different ways, we've proven that that is correct. And 5, well, 5 is vertical compared to 6. It would be supplementary with 4 and 7. It would correspond with angle 1. So no matter which way you do it, that one's also got to be 56 degrees. So let's quickly finish off the question since we've now identified. We just need to fill in the blocks. Angle 2 there, angle 2 is 56 degrees Y because this angle here and these two made 180, meaning they're supplementary. Together they make a straight angle. Notice the work they're showing there is the fancy work like we were solving an equation, except instead of saying X, it gives the name of an angle. They subtract 124 for both sides and get 56 degrees. So that angle is indeed 56 degrees, which we know to be correct because we already did the work. Same question, redrawn, but same question. Now they're asking us to find 6. Well, remember from what we saw just a minute ago before we tab down here, angle 6 was the same as angle 2 because they were both beneath the parallel lines and to the left of the transversal. And this we figured out was 56 degrees being based on the fact that these two together make 180. They're supplementary to angles. So since this is 56 degrees, this was also 56 degrees. And again, that's from what we call corresponding angles. Now, even though we're at the check it out examples, which is usually the logical end here, we have a couple concepts that we actually haven't talked about yet. We have two other types of angle pairs that we can use to match things up. We have alternate interior angles, and we have alternate exterior angles. Interior, in this type of problem, means that they are between the parallel lines. Think about what the word interior means in general. If we're talking about interior decorating, we're talking about decorating the inside of your home. All right, that's what interior means here. It's inside something. Well, the only thing you could be inside here is the parallel lines. So if we're looking at this check it out first example here, we're talking about 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so then the alternate part. What are they talking about when they're talking about alternate? They're talking about things being on the opposite sides of the transversal. Now let me give you a hint so you can see probably more easily how these match up. What's true about alternate interior angles is that alternate interior angles are congruent. So let's say we were taking a look at number six. And remember, we're only talking about right now what's between the parallel lines, so 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, if I'm talking about 6, what kind of looks like it matches up with 6? Well, 3 should kind of look like it matches up with 6, because those are both obtuse angles. They're bigger than that L shape, bigger than 90 degrees. Remember, we can take our finger and our thumb, make an L, that's a right angle. We stretch them out as wide as we can, and that's an obtuse angle. These are both look like they're obtuse angles. Indeed, they are. They're both obtuse angles, and they are congruent. They are alternate interior angles. They are between parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. And they are exactly the same. And you're going to see 4 and 5 are also alternate interior angles. They're saying, well, those don't look obtuse. They're not obtuse. They're actually acute angles. But remember, they're not related to 3 and 6. They're related to each other. Right? Those two both look acute because they are both acute because they're both the same alternate interior angles have the property of congruence. So here, 4 would be the same as 5. So if I tell you 3, you should be able to figure out 4, 5, and 6. 
three and six match up from alternate interior. And then if I gave you three, you could partner four with supplementary, and then four and five would give you the alternate interior from that way. Now, when we talk about alternate exterior angles, those are angles that are outside the parallel lines now. But notice alternate is still there, so they're still talking about opposite sides of the transversal. So you kind of saw how they matched up here, so it's not going to really be too much work for you to figure out that one and eight are going to match up. Those are outside the parallel lines and on opposite sides of this transversal. Notice that one and eight both look acute. They are both acute. As a matter of fact, they're exactly the same. So one and eight are alternate exterior angles that have the property of congruence. Two and seven, same deal. So if I tell you two, you know seven. If I tell you one, you know eight. When I partner the concepts of alternate interior and alternate exterior and corresponding angles and vertical angles and supplementary angles, what I should be able to do is give you an illustration with that like that, give you just one angle measure, and you should be able to find all the other seven angles. Now, if you're still struggling with seeing how things match up, what I want you to do is draw an illustration like this on a piece of paper. And then take a pair of scissors right here in the middle of the transversal and cut those up. And what I want you to do is hold them up to the light and make this top part, after you cut it, line it up with this part. And what you're going to see is how the angles relate. You're going to see that 2 and 6 are the same, and that 1 and 5 are the same, and then 3 and 7. And then what I want you to do is take that top piece and give it a full 180 degree turn. So it's upside down, and you're going to see the angles that match up from the outside, like 2 and 7 and 1 and 8, because when you flip it over, you're going to see it's also going to line up on top of itself and show you the angles that match up. Okay. So here in this question, we're supposed to talk about what angles look like they match up, and then we're supposed to give some angle measures. So again, we can go ahead and measure here, but we, they've already done that for us, so let's not work too hard on that. But what we see here is that 1 and 4 should be the same based on vertical angles. Again, we've already talked. If I took, it, took a pair of scissors and cut it right there, and then dropped it down and lined it up with this bottom piece, the piece that's in this top left would match up with what's in the top left there, 5. Those are corresponding angles. And we know that 5 and 8 are going to match up because those are vertical angles, too. So 1 and 4 and 5 and 8 should logically all have the same measure. Okay, now we can do that now with the other set of angles. And you can see how these match up. You can see just looking at the angles, they're all obtuse. But we know from all of the earlier questions we've done, that 2 and 3 and 6 and 7 have to match up. 2 and 3 are vertical angles, so we know they're the same. 2 and 6 have to match up. They're both above a parallel line and to the right of the transversal, so they're corresponding. 6 and 7 have to match up because they're across from each other in that X shape. That makes them vertical angles. As far as the measuring part, well, that's really just a good way to prove it to yourself. Go ahead and measure angle 2, and then measure angle 3, and then measure 6, and then measure 7. And what you're going to see when you measure those is they all have the exact same measure. You can repeat the process for the ones in yellow. Go ahead and measure angle 1, and then measure angle 4, and then measure angle 5, and then measure angle 8 and you'll see that all those angles have the same measure as well. All right, the last question asks us to identify the measure of angle 5, knowing that line N is parallel to line M. So remember, you've got this transversal here, which is this line that goes across. Again, these two are your parallel lines. We're supposed to find angle 5. Well, there's lots of ways we can get to 5, but probably the easiest to get to 5 is to go through 1. Because 5 and 1 
are corresponding angles. They're both above a parallel line and to the left of the transversal. So whatever one is, five has to be the same. Well, notice looking there at those two angles, the 144 and angle one, those two together are supplementary angles. If you're having a hard time seeing that with me just covering that up, cover up the line that protrudes then. What's left? It's a line or a straight angle, 180 degrees. So if this segment here is 144, how much more do I need to get to 180 degrees? Well, that means I would need 36 more to get to 180 degrees. 36 plus 144 is 180. Now, as we said, 1 and 5 are the same because they're both above a parallel line and to the left of the transversal. So if this is 36 degrees, this has to be 36 degrees as well. And that's how we come up with 5 because it corresponds to 1 and 1 and this one are supplementary, meaning they make 180 is the logic there that they express in the box at the bottom of the screen.